In the news this week, federal government rejected Tony Abbott's call to cut immigration. Plus, new research links cause of early onset dementia with excessive drinking. Also, Barnaby Joyce quits as Deputy Prime Minister. And two Aboriginal students recognised for outstanding grades. This is the Evening News with Ivan Loon and Danielle Staniskov. Good evening. Former Prime Minister Tony Abbott's proposal to cut permanent migration to Australia would cost the federal budget almost $5 billion over the next four years. Federal Treasurer Scott Morrison said Mr Abbott's plan fails to recognise the economic prosperity created by migrants. Taylor Hanna has the details. Tony Abbott's plans to reduce Australia's annual immigration intake by 80,000 people is causing controversy around the country. The $5 billion cuts would be too costly and deny the economy much-needed contributions from skilled migrants. Most of the sort of mainstream economists generally argue that immigration boosts employment, that, that you know, the sort of demand they create ends up producing jobs. But One Nation's Upper House MP argues that excessive immigration is affecting employment, calling for immigration at a more sustainable level. The migrants come in, they work, they have a job, they pay taxes, it's not an issue. But what is an issue is the driving of wages lower for local people who are already in Australia. The West Australian citizens who struggle to get work because they're being outcompeted is an issue. Migration lawyer Lily Chen said Australia will always be an immigration country. This country provides a lot of opportunities for people who are willing to work, regardless your occupation and your ethnicity. And that's why migrants really like this country. Ms Chen thinks the federal government only sees the negative aspects of immigration and should consider how much immigrants actually contribute to the Australian economy. Use the data, use the evidence to speak it itself. You don't need any politician. Taylor Hanna, WAMN News. Young people are warned to curb excessive drinking for their future mental health, with new research revealing most early onset dementia is caused by too much alcohol. But while the link is greater than first thought, experts say young people just aren't aware of the health risk. Nelson Liu reports. We're a nation of social drinkers, but now too much alcohol could affect our mental health sooner. It's going to be a considerable uh, problem. A study published by the Lancet Public Health Journal reveals nearly 6 in 10 people were diagnosed with early onset dementia from heavy drinking. The study shows young heavy drinkers develop the condition before the age of 65. Experts are concerned young drinkers don't consider the long-term risks. It's quite alarming to hear about the numbers of people with dementia that uh, ha are linked with excessive alcohol use. While the link between alcohol and dementia is larger than previously thought, excessive drinking isn't particularly new. Young people simply don't really make the connection between the behaviours they're engaging in today and what they see as possible uh, consequences. But the state government says measures are currently in place to help curb alcohol-related dementia. We are working tirelessly at the Mental Health Commission th through the drug and alcohol strategies to make sure we get that message across. And they say people need to be aware of how much they're drinking to protect their health. And must be used responsibly. Nelson Liu, WAMN News. Barnaby Joyce has announced his resignation after mounting criticism and media scrutiny, which started after his affair with former staffer Vicky Campion was revealed. The former Deputy Prime Minister and Federal Nationals leader said on Friday that his resignation should act as a circuit breaker to end the discussion while taking the attention of the last few weeks of his party and his family. Mr Joyce will remain as the member for New England and his resignation will go into effect on Monday. Telethon Kids Institute researcher and Children's Hospital audiologist Dr Chris Brennan-Jones has been awarded funding to increase early detection and treatment for childhood ear infections. Otitis media is a middle ear infection which affects more than half of all Aboriginal children, causing lifelong hearing impairment and delayed development. If it means that we can get more screening done during that time, it means that we can get to those kids earlier in the, in the life of their disease. And what it means is that we, mean it, we can get treatment to them quicker. The program will also improve the delivery of routine audiology assessments, reducing the waiting time by two and a half years. A 22-year-old Nora Mara man has been charged in relation to a robbery incident. A woman pulled into a Belmont Racecourse car park where she was talking on the phone. Then the man approached the driver's door of the White Range Rover. 
allegedly pulled and forced her out of the vehicle before driving away. Police air wing units were deployed and monitored the vehicle until it came to a stop on Hepburn Avenue after running out of fuel. The driver and three other passengers were arrested. The man was charged with various offences and was refused bail. The UN Security Council has failed to reach a deal on a ceasefire agreement for Syria, with Russia aiming to present a resolution allowing civilians to escalate from eastern Ghouta region. As the negotiations continue to drag on, Syrian government forces have been pushing into the rebel stronghold, with more than 400 people killed. The United States, France and Britain are pushing for a vote as soon as possible. Britain is seeking a longer period to end the Brexit transition with the aim to push the proposed period to 31st of December 2020. Britain justified that the extension is needed in order to strike a trade deal with the EU. However, it is understood that a new trade deal cannot be signed until after the UK leave the Union. Currently, the negotiations are underway as the UK seeks a transition period for local residents and businesses. And finally this week, two of Western Australia's highest performing Aboriginal students have been awarded with the 2017 Rob Riley Memorial Prize. John Curtin College of Arts graduate Ashley Moroni received the ATAR Prize. Meanwhile, Belmont City College graduate Kieran Davies received the VET Prize. Minister Sue Ellery noted the importance of role models to students and praised the example set by Ashley and Kieran. Role models are important for every student and for Ashley and Keenan, they're demonstrating to other Indigenous students that uh, you can achieve whatever you set your mind to achieve. It wasn't really, I didn't expect it, so it was just, yeah, it was exciting to know I'd won it, but also, yeah, humbling as well. Just to... Well, congratulations to both of them. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. You can catch up with the latest news on our website and Facebook. From Danny and myself and the rest of the team until 8 o'clock next Sunday, a very good evening to you. Good night. Thank you.